Isaiah 11 and 4, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and will reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Psalms 147 and 6, the Lord lifts up the meek. He casts the wicked down to the ground. Psalms 149 and 4, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people he will beautify the meek with salvation. Who will he beautify with salvation? The meek. James 4 and 6. But he gives more grace. Wherefore he says God resists the proud but gives grace unto the humble. Meek is being humble too. Matthew 21 and 5. Tell ye the daughters of Zion. Behold the king comes unto thee meek and sitting upon an ass and a coal the fowl of an ass. So he's telling you daughters of Jerusalem. He's not these proud men. He's a meek man. That's how he comes. Isaiah 29 and 19. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord. And the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Ephesians 3 and 10. So this, um, the reason why I bring up this scripture is because I want to talk about principalities and powers in heavenly places. I'm talking about the righteous ones like wisdom, knowledge, mercy, truth, meek, purity, piety, charity, you know, the good ones. All right. To the intent that now onto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. So this is when it's talking about the good spirits. There's two spirits. Um, precepts that talk about it in Ephesians 3 and 10 and Titus 3 and 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates to be ready to every good work. Those are the good the good principalities and powers. Now here it talks about the evil ones. 1 Peter 3 um, no, actually, this is still talking about the good ones in 1 Peter 3 and 22. Who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. That's talking about Christ and that everything's under him, good and bad spirits, good and bad authorities, powers and principalities, because what he did, his noble act for mankind. All right sacrificing himself as being a living sacrifice for our sins. All right, Galatians 2 and 15. This is talking about the wicked principalities and powers. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. And Galatians 1 and 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And in Romans 8 and 38 and in Romans 13 and 1, those are talking about the evil powers. Okay, so I just want to separate the two. Um, when God made light and he created darkness, the light was the principalities and powers and the good spirits. The darkness was also was the evil spirits. All right where you get, you know, fear and, you know, the evil spirits, hate, unforgiveness. Those are Satan's kingdom, okay? Those come from the kingdom of darkness. He separated the two. Now, let's go into what meekness has to say. The reason why I read those scriptures is so you know that when meek is talking. Meek says, this is why you have it in the Bible. The spirit of meek is the one who says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Let this be in you, which was also in Christ, who made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. So you see these people who promote themselves, who put apostle so-and-so and prophet so-and-so and like make their pages like that and, you know, claim, you know, you're not supposed to make yourself of any reputation. You can tell people, yeah, I'm, this is what God made me. This is my gift. But for you to be promoting yourself and looking recognition and fame, those are things that Satan used to destroy servants of God. Okay. All right. And being found in fashion as a man humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And you got to be worried when people love you, you know, woe to them when their world loves you, you know, the world loves its own. Real prophets and seers and things, people who work for God are hated and they don't have a lot of followers behind them because they're speaking the truth. The truth is an unpopular subject. Now, Meek says, endure all things as a good soldier of Christ. What have I been telling you? Do you know, wield your sword. And as you are called to exercise all long suffering with regard to human provocation, so from the hand of God, endure all things, even the most sharp and heavy afflictions. 
acquiescing in his will, trusting in his care, and rejoicing in the fruit of your suffering may but be to take away sin or bring consolation or edification to others. If you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and grace rests on you. Can you suffer for Christ? What does Josephine say? I fear that I should act a weak and cowardly part if called to extreme sufferings. What does meekness say? Embrace the uplifted hand that holds the rod, knowing it to be just, and praise him that he is dealing with you as one of his own children, whom he tenderly loves, for his chastenments are for your own eternal good. Now, patience goes on to speak, but I'm going to go on the other part where meek speaks because we're talking about meekness, right? You will be called to take a journey, which will be a perilous one, and your mind must be fortified with strength and resolution, and your heart prepared by humility and meekness. What have I been teaching you guys? Forward thoughts separate from God and to purify and cleanse your heart and guard it from attacks of Satan, right? And your heart prepared by humility and meekness because Satan's proud. So people who teach proud things, they're, you know, who they're working with, or you will not find yourself equated to the conflicts in which you must engage. But if you do these, you may always have the assurance that the event will be a glorious one. He then put a handful of raisins into her hand saying, although the sheaves of Josephine's brethren must bow to his sheaves, although the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars must be obedience to him. Yet, let me go into some more where Meek talks. All right. She's like, Josephine says, I do not know how close the union of others is to him, but I am bound to him by more ties than mortals can know. The bound is a, in the loose of, uh, the, the suitable one. It is a blessed one. It is a voluntary one, a pleasing chain, which while it binds, grants the most perfect freedom. And I'm altogether unshackled from this world. So I desire ever to remain. I don't desire ever to remain. Do you not recollect that if any man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself? There is there any such as arrogance in humility? No. And is not a humble soul always dignified with heavenly mindedness? Yes. And can there be any such as a religion without meekness? No, certainly not. But perhaps they are humble in some things and in other things not so. Is that constant? Does a fountain send forth 